In other news on Monday, Mel Tucker released a statement through his attorney telling his side of the story in the case that got him suspended and it looks like it's probably going to cost him his job at Michigan State. In a few minutes, you're going to hear from Graham Couch, the Lansing State Journal. We didn't ask him about this statement because we didn't have it yet when we talked to Graham, but let's talk about the statement now. It minces no words at the beginning. Brenda Tracy's allegations of harassment are completely false, reads the statement from Mel Tucker through his attorney. And he then goes on to explain how they met and basically says that the the investigation found they had, quote unquote, a personal relationship and that they shared, quote unquote, deeply personal and private information with each other. Basically, what Mel Tucker seems to be describing is an emotional affair. Now, Mel Tucker in the in the statement says he'd been estranged from his wife for a while and that that wasn't the marriage was not salvageable at that point, uh, but he was married at the time. He does say the the phone call that we talked about that the USA Today story describes in detail uh, happened, that what happened during the phone call happened. He admitted that to the investigators. Uh, he says, while I am saddened by Miss Tracy's disclosure of the sensitive nature of this call, let me be perfectly clear. It was an entirely mutual private event between two adults living at opposite ends of the country. She initiated the discussion that night, sent me a provocative picture of the two of us together, suggested what she may look like without clothes, and never once during the 36 minutes did she object in any manner, much less hang up the phone. And he then says, it was not till four months later, after the next presentation for Brenda Tracy to the Michigan State football team, which was you know, her paid gig, was postponed. And after he complained that she and her assistant were spreading rumors about Mel Tucker's marriage, that she told anyone about it. He said she also sent him a happy Father's Day text two months after that call. He says that the hearing scheduled for October 5th and 6th is quote unquote ridiculously flawed and not designed to arrive at the truth. So what you have here is Mel Tucker telling his side of the story. What's interesting about this is the USA Today story did include almost all of this. Mel Tucker mentions in his statement that uh, he gave Brenda Tracy a, a, an expensive pair of shoes, that he Venmoed her $200, uh, that he made a, a donation in his own name to her charity. And that's all in the, the USA Today story as well. The, the, this is not necessarily different information. It's presented in a slightly different way, but not different. One of the key lines in here is this one. The investigation has not been fair or unbiased. I can only conclude that there is an ulterior motive designed to terminate my contract based on some other factor, such as a desire to avoid any Nasser taint or my race or gender. Nasser would be Larry Nasser, who was the doctor at Michigan State, who was found to have been molesting his patients for years. And basically the people in charge at the time covered it up and, and didn't investigate properly and didn't handle it when people were trying to, to report Larry Nasser. So that has been hanging over Michigan State for years. Uh, I would imagine that Mel Tucker is probably right. There are probably quite a few people at Michigan State who do have the ulterior motive to terminate his contract because of this. I don't necessarily think it's because of Larry Nasser or of anybody's race or gender. I think it's because they owe him about $80 million guaranteed, and he's not winning at the level or recruiting at the level that they thought he was going to. So if we're going to really just say it here, that's why. Now, if you're Mel Tucker, you're going to argue that that's wrong. You're going to argue that this is a private situation. This is his private life. This is not him engaging in any sort of illegal activity or anything that would, would violate his contract. And the Michigan State's going to come and argue that it does violate his contract because it brought ridicule upon the university or because he was having a relationship with the university vendor. However they want to frame it, that's what they're going to try to do. So this is going to get fought out for a while. I don't think Mel Tucker's coaching Michigan State anymore. You're going to hear from Graham. He'll explain why he came to that conclusion very quickly. But I would imagine that there's still a lot of fight left here because there is a ton of money at stake. If you're Mel Tucker, you're going to keep fighting for it. Even if this hearing goes against him and they fire him for cause, my guess is his attorney comes back and sues. The other option is they can settle right now between now and the hearing where they can settle 
anytime for a set dollar amount that isn't the full amount. And he says, okay, I'm going to drop this. I'll take the money. That probably is the cleanest solution to this. But if you're Michigan State and you feel like you've got a case and you can do it without paying him, they're going to go through with the case. But Mel Tucker has said his piece now that, that he believes the investigation is a sham and that it is designed to railroad him. So we will see what happens. I don't know that it changes much because, again, none of this stuff was new information. All of this was in the USA Today report, which drew from the investigative report that was turned in to Michigan State that will be used in this hearing in October. So I don't know how much it changes anything. It's Mel Tucker's version of it, but it's weird because usually in cases like this, you get all sorts of new information when one when another person gives their side, but because Mel Tucker had given his side in the investigation, we'd already seen all that. So I don't know if it changes anything. This is basically the same information that Michigan State's leaders had when they suspended Mel Tucker. So we will find out what happens from this point forward. But my guess is still Mel Tucker has coached his last game at Michigan State. The only question is whether they're going to have to pay him or not. We'll be right back with Graham Couch. We welcome in Graham Couch from the Lansing State Journal. And Graham, you've covered Michigan State for a long time. You've, you've covered a lot of weird things. How strange has this Mel Tucker situation been? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's up there. Um, you know, Michigan State's had uh, some not great things go on for a while uh, in, in different, you know, different eras and different years. And uh, But this is, you know, if you had told me a month ago the idea that Mel Tucker wouldn't be coaching week three and would likely be done as, uh, I think almost certainly done as Michigan State's coach, I would have bet you just about anything. I would have let you tattoo something on my forehead. I would have taken that bet. So you you wrote very quickly once the USA Today story came out that you thought this was the end for Mel Tucker. And what was it the, about that story that said, okay, there's no path forward here? A couple things. One, that it, first of all, I, based on the story, I think the, the Title IX findings when they go through the hearing is, is going to find against him. Now, even if it doesn't, I, I think there's enough there that he's been in, in – um, breach of contract or at least given them cause to fire him without owing him, you know, the nearly 80 million, I think that's still left on that, that contract, uh, just based on some of the language in the deal about bringing embarrassment and, and, and to the university. Uh, this is that, this is, you know, you, this is a, um, and, and so I think even what he's admitted now would, 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 would do that. And, and it's just, um, you know, this is a, a in Michigan state, you cannot, I'm not sure you survived this anywhere, but at MSU that has tried so hard to um, improve itself, distance itself, uh, recapture a reputation that isn't uh, doesn't have so much to do with how it's handled sexual assault and um, Title IX miscues and all th other things like that. You, you're just not going to come out of this unscathed. And, and then there's, you know, the fact that, that I don't think they're as sure about him as they were before. And, and, there's certainly a way out now as well. How much is that, that this is a way out of that contract? Because I, I would imagine probably last season there was already some buyer's remorse. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's a small part. I think, any, I think any coach under any contract, if he was making a third of what he was making and, and they had won, you know, nine games last year, I think this would still be it, given the dynamics at the university and just the – lack of tolerance and you can see it from MSU's fan base like people are just tired of it they're sick of it there's nobody very few people sticking up for the idea of Mel Tucker or the, the the idea of him coming back or anything like that um but you know it, it as always people's perception of you uh changes with winning and and losing I do think though there were a, enough people before this who were still hopeful uh the way they'd recruited um, that, you know, his, his real first recruiting class was only sophomores and redshirt freshmen. And um, I think a lot of people still had high hopes for the era, but uh, yeah, that that's over now. We'll be right back with more from Graham Couch, but first I want to tell you about game time. If you're looking for a ticket to a game this week or maybe a concert or a comedy show this week, 
Go to game time, download the app, find your venue, find your concert, find your game. You know, there's a lot of good college football games. Actually, this week, you know, we we're saying the schedule doesn't look all that great, but that's when all the crazy stuff happens, and you can probably get a good deal on some of these tickets. The best deals are at game time. The best deals on the last minute seats are at game time, and it is so easy. You just flick your way through the app, find your town, find your team, search either way, click on the event, click on the ticket, a picture comes up, you're seeing the stadium. That's not a generic picture of the stadium. That is the view you get from that seat that you'd be buying. And at that point, it's a couple more taps and that ticket is yours. Game time takes all the stress out of it. It's the easiest way to handle last minute ticket buying. And if you use the code STAPLES, right now you get $20 off your first purchase. So that's code STAPLES for $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app, find that game you want to go to, and get that ticket. It's that easy. It'll take you a few seconds, stress free, and you're in there. Game Time, code STAPLES, $20 off your first purchase. So uh, I'm curious because we saw some stuff coming out last night from, from their PR people that Teresa Woodruff, the president, Alan Holler, the, the AD, did not know the specifics of this case until the USA Today story dropped. And the AD was asked specifically about what changed. Why did you suspend him today versus suspending him in July when the report was done or, or in March after he was interviewed? Why didn't they just say we can't be told what's going on. I, th that makes no sense to me because it makes it look like they were trying to cover it up, even if they weren't. Yeah, no, they, they really, they really fumbled uh, yesterday. I, it, I thought it was a great opportunity, a, a missed opportunity to have people really believe and, and that, that you've handled this competently and appropriately. And, um, and the, the interim president even tried to sell that, right. This concept that it's a new MSU and all this, and then you take three questions and I mean, what is that? And, and it, it was only to their detriment, too, because even if you can't say a ton and it shouldn't have just been Alan Haller talking, he did not have a great day up there. Uh, but the, the, the interim president should have been available for questions then as well. But, uh, you know, even if you can't say a ton, you can say I, I can't answer. You can keep answering questions until you run into things that give insight, because there were there were nuts and bolts basics that would have gotten uh answered including that including the idea that they didn't know anything and they should have been sort of screaming that from the mountaintops or you know the idea that they were aware in december but didn't really know the contact contents of anything until sunday that's really important and that was not explained in that opportunity and so it, you wind up with a day of of coverage where people are doubting you and and you're, you're you know and some of that stuff was you're right was clarified and you know, but I had to do the same thing. Right? I had to reach out to their folks last night and get clarity on a number of things that I wondered about. And and I think they under as late as they were getting back to people last night, I think they understood that they had dropped the ball. Yeah, it's amazing to me because I've I've covered situations involving Title IX investigations at other schools, and they've made it very clear that the the superiors of the person accused sometimes are not allowed to be in the loop because they're worried about somebody may be coming in and meddling with the investigation, that sort of thing. But yeah, when, when Alan Haller is asked what changed between July and now, all he has to say is, well, I wasn't allowed to know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just don't get that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, they didn't have all the information. I mean, what did change too is basically, you know, the, the U S day today report come, came out and, and a couple things with that. Number one, they now have all the information. Number yeah. two, Brenda Tracy is sort of given her blessing at that point to have her identity known, right? You're no longer protecting a name. And so there are a couple of things that, that changed in that moment. And I don't think it's, you know, but they did a very poor job of explaining uh, why they, you know, because initially people are like, well, they knew in December, why did, why wasn't he suspended in December? If the findings were submitted in, in the end of July, why does he continue on? And, and, um, you know, they just, they, they didn't explain it well. So it, it's, it's interesting too, because in, in these cases, we often don't get to see both sides of the story right away, but because they had the entire investigative report in that USA Today story, you, you could see Mel Tucker's side of it 
where he said this was consensual. And then you have other things like all of the phone calls between the two of them and the fact that both of them deleted their text message. But what I keep coming back to, and I think you said this earlier, Graham, what he's already admitted to, like the agreed upon facts are probably already enough, it feels like. Yeah, I mean, she was a vendor of the school. He brought her in, you know, I mean, she was paid by the school to come in and, you know, sort of the, the irony of it is to speak to his team about avoiding behavior like this. Um, and, you know, it, it it's, but the big thing is, right, this is any em, employer in their work situation where somebody is a subordinate or somebody is a contractor, you leave yourself open to, uh, to this situation. He has admitted a um, behavior that Michigan State is not going to um, is not going to is not going to allow. And the other the other problem is then you look at why he canceled her coming back to campus, right? And it's because it of this, which is exactly why the, the companies don't allow for these relationships. And um, yeah, I mean he's and and at this point, Michigan's I don't know how you come back and you. Uh, get donor support. I don't know how you come back and, you know, get a recruit and, and get the team all on your side. There's just, there's just no chance he's going to continue. So they, they bring in Harlan or they elevate Harlan Barnett to be the interim head coach. They bring back Mark D'Antonio to be, a, you know, associate head coach kind of sounding board for Harlan Barnett. What kind of opportunity is this for a guy who he was there for basically the entirety of the D'Antonio era. He, he's become almost an institution at Michigan State as an assistant, he was brought back by Mel Tucker. Uh, what, what's what's it like for him? And then how do the players feel about playing for him? Yeah, it's a good question. I, you know, really I haven't got a sense of the players yet on that. For him, though, it, it's, I mean, this is his, I think, his best chance in some ways. He's always wanted this. He's wanted to be a head coach. Um, I believe that when he went to Florida State to be the defensive coordinator, the hope from Mark D'Antonio and him was that it would go well down there. And then when Mark D'Antonio retired, he would be a natural heir apparent and it didn't go well down there. And so he wasn't really a, a serious candidate for that. Uh, but if, if, you know, I still think it's way more than likely that they wind up going outside the program at, at mm -hmm. the end of this year, but it's a chance. It's not just one game or two games. It, it's 10. And it's a team that could go a lot of different ways and you're just going to have to deal with a lot of challenges. And if it goes well, if the vibe stays good, if they look like they're a program that continues to improve and is headed somewhere under this coaching staff, there's an argument that maybe this is the guy to lead this coaching staff and, and, and continue forward with. So it's, it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity for him. It's going to be, it's going to be a hard season though. It's hard to tell based on the two opponents they've played, but does it feel like they were an improved group over last year? Yes, defensively, especially. I mean, I think that's where, you know, and again, they haven't faced a quarterback who can throw the ball forward. They yet. will this so week. Be a, yeah, that changes with Michael Penix. Um, but uh, defensively, they look like a, a more sound group, a group that tackles better in space, that's better up front. Uh, Noah Kim looks like a guy who's, you know, has a chance to at least be a, a solid quarterback. He got in a real groove, 15 straight completions last week. Again, it's against Richmond. So what do you know? But, I, you know, I, I don't think, uh, or I, I, they got a number of young receivers that they're high on. I, the offensive line, we'll see. But I, I think it has a chance to be a uh, 500 or better team if they can maintain focus and resolve. If when Mel Tucker's fired and the idea of the transfer portal comes to, if, you know, if the team stays together, if they deal with, there are going to be some hiccups. They're going to face teams better than them that are going to beat them. Um, if they can deal with all that and they can be focused week in and week out, I think they have a chance at a decent season. Graham Couch, I know you got a lot of news to cover and, and a lot more to do this week. So thank you so much for your time. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.